Hi, my name's Chris, and today I'm going to be putting one of Canon's most popular lenses ever made through a few of my tests to see how good it really is. We'll be looking at the Canon EF 50mm f1.8 Mark II. It's the cheapest lens Canon makes, costing only about £80 or US dollars and it's designed to work with Canon's expensive full-frame cameras and also their less expensive APS-C ones. Why is this lens so popular? Well, it's a very cheap way for photographers to get a lens with a wide maximum aperture, which means two things. Firstly, this lens lets in a lot of light, so it's useful for shooting at night or indoors. This lens's maximum aperture of f1.8 lets in about 10 times more light than an aperture of f5.6, which is the maximum on a typical kit lens at 50mm. Secondly, that wide f1.8 aperture can give you a nice out-of-focus background in your pictures, separating out your foreground. Here's a picture taken at f5.6, the maximum aperture on your everyday Canon kit lens, and here's f1.8. As you can see, there's a pretty huge difference. The f1.8 picture looks fantastic. The lens is fixed at 50mm, so it doesn't zoom in or out. On a full-frame camera, 50mm is a very nice focal length, being wide enough to get quite a lot into your picture, but zoomed in enough to nicely emphasise your subject. Here's some video footage from a full-frame camera. On an APS-C camera, however, the image is cropped, as you can see here, so you get the equivalent of an 80mm field of view instead, which is much tighter. It's a little more tricky to use as a result, especially as the lens does not have image stabilization, but it's still a very useful focal length, making the lens pretty good for portrait photography. Let's look at the build quality. This lens is seriously cheap in just about every way. It's very small, very light, and very plasticky, feeling a bit like a toy, especially with its plastic lens mount. It probably won't survive all that much punishment, so you wouldn't want to go dropping it or throwing it around the place. The focus ring turns fairly precisely, but not very smoothly. The lens does not have full-time manual focus. When you switch it to autofocus, don't try to turn the focus ring, or you'll force the gears around and potentially damage the autofocus motor. The front element of the lens extends as you change focus, but it doesn't turn around, which is good news if you're using a polarizing or graduating filter. The autofocus is fairly accurate and very fast, but it makes some noise while it's doing its thing. Overall, the lens is very functional. It's not classy, but it's perfectly usable, and it works, so you're getting what you pay for. Let's see about image quality. Firstly, I'll test it on one of Canon's expensive full-frame cameras, a 20 megapixel Canon 6D. I've turned on peripheral illumination and chromatic aberration correction for this test. The reason why is that more and more new cameras are coming out with this feature, so it seems to be the future way that pictures will be shot. At f1.8, the image is quite sharp in the middle of the picture. Contrast levels are not particularly high, but it's a good enough image. Over in the corners, there is some sharpness, but it's mostly hidden behind some ghosting and low contrast levels. The contrast picks up when you stop the aperture down to f2.8, and a lot of the ghosting has cleared up, making the image look a lot sharper. Stop down to f4 for very good sharpness and contrast in those difficult corners, and at f5.6, the picture quality is absolutely perfect. The lens stays this sharp even when you stop the aperture down to f16, although we see a softer image at f22 due to the effects of diffraction. So on a full-frame camera, the lens is surprisingly sharp, although at wider apertures we see weak contrast levels, which make your pictures look softer, particularly in the corners. There's fantastic picture quality between f4 and f16. Alright, let's test the lens on one of Canon's far more common APS-C cameras, in this case a 20 megapixel Canon 70D. If you paid less than a thousand pounds for your camera, then the odds are that it has the smaller APS-C sized sensor at its heart. At f1.8 the lens is fairly sharp in the middle of the image, 
There's a little ghosting and purple fringing visible, particularly on contrasting edges like these window frames, and contrast levels are not too great, but it's fairly sharp. Over in the corners we see some softness and low contrast levels. Stop the lens down to f2.8 and things look sharper and clearer, and image quality in the middle of the picture is fantastic. The middle remains this sharp at f4, and the corners are looking good too, and at f5.6 the image quality is perfect. Just like on a full frame camera, the lens remains this good down to f16, although at the narrowest aperture of f22, things are looking a bit soft again. Overall, on an APS-C camera, this lens puts in a reasonably good performance, even at f1.8, although you'll have to stop the lens down to get sharp corners. My biggest issue with this lens is its general lack of contrast, but again, you can stop down the aperture for better results. Alright, let's look at distortion and vignetting, or darkness in the corners. If you're using an APS-C camera, then neither are really an issue, so I'll test them on a full frame camera. The lens shows a small amount of barrel distortion, but nothing that will be really noticeable. I've seen worse results on a 50mm lens before. At f1.8 there is a gentle pattern of darkness in the corners, so the vignetting is quite clearly noticeable, although it's not too dreadful. You'll want to use peripheral illumination on your camera to brighten those corners up, or stop the lens down to f2.8 for an improvement, or even further down to f4 for very even illumination across the whole picture. The lens can focus as close as about 45cm, which isn't really very near. The close-up image quality is quite good at f1.8, and at f2.8 it's nice and sharp. I've tried a few different copies of this lens over the years, and they all had one thing in common, they freak out if you're shooting near bright lights. You get a heck of a lot of complex flaring, and a massive loss of contrast, and that flaring is often visible in everyday pictures and video footage. So, even more issues with contrast. Although the lens can get you some pretty out-of-focus backgrounds, the actual quality of those out-of-focus areas, also known as the lens's bokeh, is not too nice. Here you can see that those out-of-focus highlights look a bit edgy and busy. You get this in almost every picture you take, particularly when the lens is dealing with more complex backgrounds. That's quite a shame. Another problem is that, when the lens's aperture is topped down, the five aperture blades give you pentagonal shaped out of focus highlights. It doesn't look particularly appealing, although there are ways of changing that shape if you don't like pentagons. Overall, the Canon EF 50mm f1.8 certainly has optical problems, but at the end of the day, it can yield good results and eye catching photographs. I would say that it's probably the perfect lens for beginners who want to develop their photography beyond what their camera's kit lens can do. If you own an APS-C camera, then remember the 50mm focal length is quite zoomed in, so although you can get some lovely portrait shots with it, it's not quite enough of a wide angle to be a good walk-around lens to keep on your camera for everyday photography. You might prefer a lens with a wider angle like these 35mm or 30mm lenses I've also reviewed, although they cost a bit more money. I personally prefer 35mm when using a full frame camera too, but that's just my own preference. Also, if you want a lens that can get really close to your subjects, then this macro lens, the Tamron 60mm f2, which is for APS-C cameras only, will be a lot more fun for you, and it has considerably nicer image quality. But, when it comes to sheer value for money, I don't think any lens in the world can beat the Canon 50mm f1.8. Multitudes of photographers have learnt better photography with this little beast, and although it's tempting to get snobby about how cheap it is, it can definitely get you some wonderful pictures.